gentlemen. <laughs> I, I have to giggle right now because my heart is full at this moment. Um, I am, I'm so honored to have one of my, I'm going to say one of my musical inspirations in my lifetime. Uh, the gentleman that you see on your screen right now, many and millions of you know this man, Mr. Ellis Hall. Hey. And just before we get into Brother Ellis, I got, you know, I, 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 I love to sing the praises of the people who mean much to me in my journey, brother. And your artistry, Brother Ellis, has, has, has become such a staple to millions around the world. Your life, not just your music, but who you are as an individual, um, your artistry, especially in this time, has found a way to touch millions of hearts that may be hurting and are hurting right now. Um, your philanthropy through your music, I mean, just gonna be evident this Saturday, April 25th, starting at two o'clock, we have the All Together Now that, you, that you'll be a part of with so many other celebrities and, and musical icons. Uh, your portion, I believe, will be between 9 and 10 o'clock p.m. Um, it, it's evident of what you're doing, Brother Ellis, and I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us at the Victor Brooks Show today, my brother. Thank you. Uh, you are the man of information. I know a lot about you, too, so I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank well, you yeah. for inviting me to come share some music light a light as we can uh, through the quote unquote dark times because the light always outshines the dark and I pray we always remember that. That's right, that's right. And, and, and speaking of that, I just wanna kind of give a, a, a follow through of, of the, the people that already know this. I mean, that's unquestioned, but we're talking when we say Ellis Hall, let me just give you just of, of, of what, it, we're talking about over 50 years of musical history. Uh, we're talking about covering more than five, five continents during this time. We're talking about an accomplished vocalist, okay, with thousands of original material that himself has recorded and others that are loved and, and, and inspiring those to this day. We're talking about a gentleman with a five octave range. Now, my musician friends out there that I know y'all are talking, you know how heavy this is, okay? Can you dig it? We're talking about five octave range. Such what you talking a, about? What you we're talking about singer, songwriter, arranger, producer, multi-instrumentalist, specifically drums, guitar, keyboards, electric, and upright bass. Brother Ellis, yes. talk to us, man. Well, I'm gonna talk to you first in song. <laughs> Get this yeah, we're going to get this from the top. Wasn't expecting this blessing. Uh, from the top. And I talked to folks all the time. I said, hey, what do you think? Yes, I can be James Taylor with a tan. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a song. One thing you'll learn about me very quickly, I pray. I love to not imitate or duplicate, but to ellicize a song. Something oh, like this. Uh. Hey, you can play the game. Get out of the park. You know it wasn't written for you. Tell me how can you stand there with your broken heart? Shame to play in the road. One thing can lead to another. Yeah. Doesn't take any sacrifice. Oh, father and mother, sister and brother. If it feels nice, don't think twice. Shower the people you love and love. All right. <laughs> in the way you feel. Yeah, that's good. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will do as I say. Shower the people you love and love. Show them the way you feel. 
things are gonna be much better if you only will. I sing like this. You can run, but you cannot hide. This is wide and young, girl. Now, what you plan to do with your foolish pride? You're all by your little lonesome, all alone. What you tell somebody, the way that you feel, you can feel it beginning to leave. Sound like a ring. Oh, yeah. But it's true, I can say that we're Yes, 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 brother. <laughs> I mean, come on now. You took me directly into the next reason of this. There's a you just you just presented the whole reason of the of the of the declared ambassador of soul. Okay, the ambassador of soul. Now, please and thank you so much, brother Ellis, for that man. I wasn't expecting it right there, but it set the tone for where we must go. Please tell me the story of that moniker. Where, how were you labeled that? <laughs> well, you see, what folks don't know is uh, over the years I've done quite a few symphonies, the big orchestras, and they're only used to playing the classical stuff and other things, and they have the pops. But I say anywhere I am, if you expect smooth jazz or anything else, nothing wrong with it. But it ain't going to happen. I have to bring the soul. So <laughs> the gentleman, uh, Mr. Jeff Tyson, who uh, also uh, arranged some of my charts for me, he said, you are the ambassador of soul. Wow. I said, well, chocolate. So I think I did that. There you go. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get to that Shaka Laka. We're gonna go to come on, we're gonna go to Shaka Laka Academy before this is over. <laughs> because it's such positivity. But having that moniker yes. from the from you know from Jess Tysick of Rochester Symphony, yes. hey man, that right there, and when that happened, what 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 was what went through your mind of your history that brought you to that point, Brother Ellis? Well, of that. I knew, especially as a kid, once I started getting into music, there was that, what well, people might call it the it factor. But I wanted to make that sound that made people want to stand up. You know, it's, it's out of the church. 
but it's way more than religion to me. It's that spiritual yeah. stance that goes on. And I tell folks when they come to my concerts, if you hold it inside, you could hurt yourself. <laughs> That's true. You got no brakes, no insurance. That's right. That's right. And you know what? What one of the one of the things I, I that I also respect about where you're coming from, not just yes. artistically, but the man himself. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you are that you that music has the ability to change minds oh. and hearts. Yes. Break that down for us, brother. Yes, it does. There have been many people who talk over the years about a song. A song will get inside your soul no matter what. Even if it's a sad song, it's going to touch you in a way that maybe nothing else can reach you. No set of words or poetry, which is, which is all wonderful and great. But when you got that song and that melody that's coming up behind you, man, mm -hmm. let it in. Let it in. Let it in. Have a choice, thank God, to let it in or not. But man, to do that, and let it raise you higher, because that's where I come from. I'm not talking about anybody else and aspersions of nobody, but I come from a place of wanna take you higher. <laughs> you know, right on, right on. And you know what? That's evident too, because let's look at your history of 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 just names like you know Bobby Womack and Ooh. and Bobby Blue Bland. I mean, those times of that soul music history. I mean, that has to be. I mean, that was, that was a college university of soul to, to be brought up in, bro. Let me tell you what's interesting. Now, folks might not remember this, but Bobby Womack, having been, when he was 15, the guitarist uh, and singing with uh, Sam Cooke. Right. And Bobby would, the things he told me about working with Sam and, and other people over the years, Wilson Pickett practically got, practically got thrown out of a building because he insisted that Bobby have a song that he wrote for Wilson presented. It's called okay. Up. And, and you know, when you got stories like that, where somebody stood their ground and it made Bobby's whole career. Now, let me tell you, before that happened, uh, because I used to love her, but yes. all over now, that right. song, Changed Bobby's life because the Rolling mm -hmm. Stones heard it. So you you have been, and then Bobby and I ended up talking about so many different uh, experiences in this music business. You know, it's it, it just yeah. it's story time. Yeah, and, and that's what a, a musician and vocalist that's what they become. Exactly. Uh, natural exactly. story time, and my vocal coach was dear friends with him. And mm. he told me, he said, I can teach you technically how to sing, but it's gonna take you <clears throat> to bring the spirit out of you. That's a heavy statement. <laughs> wow. Oh, and it, and it did. It really, I was all of 17, I wanted to do all the licks. <laughs> he said, now, what are you saying with that lick? Yeah. He shot me cold. And now, was I, this Clay Douglas you're talking about? Oh, it is. Oh, my goodness. Come on. It man. is Clay Douglas. And look, <laughs> I mean, he did things. He did things by talking to me about the philosophy behind the singing or behind the words I wrote. I wasn't really writing at that time, but it translated later to that angst of what can I get out? How can I make you feel? Coming over the radio, if I sing something, What's going to touch your soul like uh, a Nat King Cole or like a Sam Cooke or, mm -hmm. or like a James Taylor? What's going to yeah. touch your soul? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, brother. That, I mean, that puts it into perspective even more about your, 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 your motto, I guess you could say, that music has a way to change your mind. And especially at this time of life right now, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not negating, you know, especially here, I never negate. No. what we're going through in the world right now, but there's always something that we can count our blessings on and count our positivity for, you dig? And music and what you just mentioned, you know? And what I gotta you, ask you. My brother, let me tell you. Yeah, go you, ahead. Go as ahead. you're talking about this, I remember watching a PBS special. Uh -huh. I think it was a couple of years ago. 
and they were talking about the slaves and how they changed the place that they were by simply humming into a fry pan or humming into a pot where the masters couldn't hear them, but they changed their own day. You think about that. <laughs> how heavy that is. Wow. You know, because I catch my mom around the house. And she wasn't a trained singer, but she would sing something that would go all the way past your soul through the moon verse. That's beyond the universe. That's that thing. And my dad could sing too, but they never did it professionally. Uh, I'm, I'm the crazy one who broke out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. With that, when did you find, because that story, and we keep referring back to your mom, who I'm having even more and more respect through what you're giving us now, yes. of, of who the essence of, of this lady is. And, and we, we, what do you carry with you? Is this where the strength comes from, brother? Of, <laughs> let's talk about the site. Let's talk about the site. Where is it, what, what has that journey been the like? The site that she gave me, and I wrote it in a song called Keep Your Life Straight Ahead. But what happened, I believe when I was one year old, she noticed that my brown eyes turned flashing blue, she called it. And she, she spent many nights crying over what she thought my destiny would be because she knew already that I didn't have the full sight of what was going on uh, physically. But what she realized is that when I moved to Boston, she ended up having a dream. And that dream, she saw me plowing my own fields, as she put it, with someone helping to guide me. And that, she said, I never worried about you again. And when, mm. she, when she first came to my show, she had all she could do. And my dad came, even though they weren't together. Uh, physically, they came to the show and were going crazy, trying not to stand on chairs because I had everybody hollering like I was in a church or something. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they knew that that dream, my mom knew that's exactly what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, because, you know, when I got instruments, especially when I got drums, I drove my mom crazy. She said, son, I know you got the practice, but you have to make all that fuss. <laughs> that's a capital F, capital F, plus. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I got you. Now, did you start out with an actual drum set to start no, off? No, I started off, they brought me, or they, they bought me a, a, a bongo set. Okay. When I had my epiphany at 14, I took another, I found another bongo set. I put them together like they were drums. I made my own hi hat, I made a wash tub bass. Wow. And I literally played the bass until my fingers bled. And wow. then the Pina family, famous for Paul Pina, uh, big old Jedi liner and great, great artist, uh, Genghis Blues, he later yeah. got nominated for an Oscar. He and his family bought me my first drum set, Red Sparkle drum set. And I'll tell you <laughs> the whole thing from there, an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the boom started right there. Huh? Literally, and <laughs> the chakalaka, which means drum. <laughs> so yeah. the drums pretty much was your first. That was your first instrumental experience, huh? Well, let's just say that's the first one I got serious with. Because in school they taught me, you know, how to do piano and stuff. So I all of a sudden, uh, and my piano teacher he hit me play. And he walked into the room, Ellis Hall! And I got to, like I was practicing. practicing okay. my, <laughs> so I was trying to get away with it. I got you. <laughs> now, I remember hearing a story about when you mentioned the guitar now, yes. how you, you had a, when you were, I don't know how old you were, but it was about a Jimi Hendrix type of a tribute you did with a guitar. Would you share oh. that? <laughs> I had. A buddy of mine had given me a Stella guitar. That's an old guitar. And it, it barely worked, but I got to play it and played it literally till my fingers bled. 
and we were playing Jimi Hendrix. I don't remember the song. I just remember we played it, and the guys were playing drums and bass. And I got excited, started running around, because I had a little bit of vision, so I didn't bang into any walls, but I was trying to stand upside down and find me a group of guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized, wait a minute, he must have a whole bunch of guitars, because I don't have no guitar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my friends of mine still laugh about that day because <laughs> that spread all over the school. Oh, man. Really you know what, brother? I'd like to, because I'd like to, I'd like to enlighten those and myself. Please. When we talk about a catalog of original music of thousands of songs, okay? Yes. Now, I know me nowhere near, <laughs> but, but, but me and my songwriting, I, I'm an artist, so I get into my, I'm not a total introvert, and I'm not a total extrovert. I'm an ambivert. I'll get in my shit. <laughs> but especially during those artistic times when I'm trying to create or I have something that I want to, you know, int introspect on. So with your thing, especially, what draws your creativity, man? To be able to do that, do you, are you, what do you follow with that? Well, like with the song, uh, with your permission, I'll perform in a minute. I dream certain songs. Uh huh. And then some songs people will bring to me and say, what can you do with this? And I absorb it. And all of a sudden, it just, I pray, it just flows out. Because I never try to force it. And there are some songs that will come in 10 or 15 minutes, like I talked with uh, my dear friend um, who's uh, passed on now, Mr. Bill Withers. That song will yep. come to you. Or it will come to you in a dream. Uh, you know, so that that's, I know how blessed I am, not just for the music, but how blessed I am to let the spirit. There you go. There you go. You know, and so if you don't mind, I'm a. Please, brother, I'm brother, that was here. your time. Uh, <laughs> no, whatever. Whatever. Let's see, go to here, and I'm going to place this on, and I'm going to, if I stand up, I'm going to slide this over like I, again, have some cooth. Can you? Go ahead. Uh, watch, watch me. Watch me. Don't, don't make me. Uh... Just like the city of you. Oh, wrong song. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is this is a song called Planet Hope, and uh, I think it touches us all. And I pray something like this, like. Uh, <laughs> The message was sent and we still believe all is not lost when we choose to see you get what you get learn as you teach Life from the soul, a heart can be reached. Hope is no stranger, this much we know. I've seen him somewhere. You've never before, and hope has a face. This much is true, the face of an angel. Who looks just like you? It's planet home. Oh, yes. Something like moments of truth. I must decide, as all must do, when we look inside. Who can I turn to when the future depends? If not you, tell me who. If not now, tell me where. Hope is no stranger. This much we know. I've seen him somewhere. You've never before, and hope has a face. 
this much is true. The face of an angel who looks just like you. Planet, only one decision with the trusses we've been given when this subject keeps us spinning. Planet, oh, can't wait. Yeah. 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 Hope is no stranger. Mm. It's but we know. I've seen him somewhere. You love me, boy. All kinds of things. This much is true. Yes. The face of an angel who looks just like you is always old. Oh, we know. I know you see You met, you met. Oh, this much is true. The face of an angel who loves you. Like you. Planet home. Oh, oh, oh. It's always close. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly what the world needs today. And you know what happened, Brother Brother Ellis? My word. Whoo! You had given me just a couple seconds on that one. That was, that was powerful, brother. I mean, you know, I'm getting, um, and it, it, it just coincides and connects with, once again, the man you are. Because your other quote, to write a song like that, it can only come next to hear somebody that says, learn to walk in the center of the highs and the lows of life. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Your, and, that's your and, quote. A shout out, absolutely, to um, co-writers, Mr. Jimmy Jackson and Ricky Lawson. Ricky's passed on one of the greatest yes, yes. celebrated drummers of all time. You've heard him on so many things. And, he uh, through uh, he brought Jimmy to me, and they sent part of the song. And I said, "Let me see how I can uh, ease it through with some fret noise." And yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when and when I played it for them, they, both of them said they cried. You know, I said, "Well, oh yeah, I just did." <laughs> it's all a celebration of thing, and uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna fix this right here. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes <laughs> you get a little fidgety, but uh, while I got the guitar in my hand, yes, please. The song I talked about earlier, um, Girl, You're Not in Kansas Anymore. Yeah. And this is a, a song that got me signed to Mr. Ray Charles' label. Okay. And uh, now being celebrated by the United Nations for the eradication of human trafficking. Please, Lord, in our time. So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> and like I told you, I carry around my own drum, drum set. That's <laughs> Folks call it a beatbox and stuff. I say, no, I can't stand on the microphone. I just, <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to make sure I do it my toms. <laughs> so I'm going to start like this. With pain, story tell time about a friend of mine. All right, something like that. Standing by the highway, gonna do it her way. Hitching a ride, anything out of town. She's delayed. Lagging down a diesel, hanging with the weasel. Let her on somewhere in the desert sun. Cause she wouldn't give him some women. Yeah. You think the grass is Karina, but life is cycles. Green and brown, survival of the fittest. When the trips on the high, innocent trees and trees. Welcome to the world beyond your door. Rainbows and Dorothy. Girl, you're not in Kansas anymore. 
Brother, you know, because a lot of people know the story of, you know, Jamie Foxx's incredible uh, performance in the movie Ray. But I want to tell, I would like to hear, you know, how did that collaboration or how would that, how did you work, what came from you working on that, on that movie as well? Well, Ray called me and said, hey, you want to come down here? Mr. Foxx is down here. He wants to meet you. <laughs> I said, you gotta be kidding, right? And I knew about Jamie's work before this. And right. Of course, Ray and I having been in this thing of making a record together. So I came in, and when I start singing Georgia, which folks can check out on ellishall.com, he, <laughs> he started making the Ray movements and <laughs> It was so hilarious. We got so many views on that. You probably, yes. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> and we've been friends ever since. I mean, uh, his success, meaning yeah. just yeah. amazing. And I mean, that's just, that's just to name one, but I mean, we could go on to your, to your, to your involvement and in performance in Polar Express with Tom Hanks. Uh, Catch me if the movie Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, a lot of people don't know that the legendary ad campaign of the California Raisins, that's Brother Ellis. I mean, so the list goes on and on and on, right? Come on, brother. <laughs> Hold it down while holding it up. Holding it down. <laughs> now, you, the, the times that you were there, Tell me about your days with Donny Hathaway, brother, because we're getting oh, tech, I'm getting people sending in who know your history as well. But oh, that let me tell you, there's never in a time, and I thank you, Lord, that I wanted to imitate anyone, like I said earlier, but he touched me. You know, when he did the song, uh, just a little bit of it. Whoa. 
hang on to the world as it spins around. Just don't let it spin. Get you down. Uh, I mean, yes, yeah. When when I first heard him, and of course he did what's going on at live, and I said, "Who is that?" And we got to talk a few times and stuff, and even through his troubled times, we had a magical connection, talking with each other. He lived and breathed music yeah. you know, even though he's fighting the other demons that music <clears throat> further accentuates what i say it's always there inside us it's whether we choose to unlock it right how glorious we can continue to be with it but having met brother donnie mm. you know and i mentioned i think earlier about my vocal coach having been friends with nat king cole just exactly. the stories from these different people of uh, Bobby Womack and, and, and Donnie and, and just even George Vincent with his crazy self and telling funny stories, you know, the great yeah. so It's like all these people just, and I don't know, there's no way you could know this, but I listen constantly to radio, modern times, olden times, just listen. And uh, some people will ask me, well, what would you do with that song? And I'd say, well, here, yeah, let me just dial up this here chord and see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I love taking them on a journey. And that's what I do when I do clinics, too, my brother. Okay. I'll talk with the kids, be they in uh, preschool or be they yeah. in first or second, third grade, fourth grade, up through college. Okay. And uh, some of the younger kids will sit on the floor and watch me as I play guitars or drums or basses and stuff. Or sometimes... I'll just walk in the room. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden they say, whoa, and I said, that's the heartbeat of your life. Here we go, let's get funky. There you go. <laughs> you know what, and what you mentioned about um, the, 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 I'm gonna say the, the label of soul music. Yes. I think, and I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna preface the question by saying, in your career, yeah. you've, in my opinion, exemplified soul, even with the acts of, or the artists such as Toby Keith, well, Vince Gill, the country western, or that, you know, what people don't necessarily consider soul music. What's your education to us on that? You know, it's interesting you would mention that, because the modern sounds of country, of course, the genius Ray Charles, he said, Music is music. It's either good and bad. And you get to choose what touches your soul. I, I, you know, that's the whole thing. What I'm, what I'm singing, like I sang Shower the People, you know, it doesn't matter if you feel it, if you think you can do something with it, be it rock or be it funky, just don't be afraid of it. Let it come out of you. If you desire it, to touch someone. And that's the whole thing, man, working with, with Toby and, and uh, Vince Gill. You know, I, I admire them both. It, it doesn't matter. Hey, what, what, what's there is there. So there you, all of a sudden, you better hold on tight or get out the way. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, ladies and gentlemen, if you, I know so many people have seen it, but I just want to double recommend it, that go on YouTube and and click on Brother Ellis's performance of Elton John's uh, Tiny Dancer. Now, because it coincides with what you just educated so many on, is that, I mean, come on, you, you presented your soulfulness into Tiny Dancer your way, and when you watch the video, you can, you can see what the people are feeling. It's interesting you'd say that because my dear friend Greg Fillingay is one of the most oh my fabulous instrumentalists and writers. He heard me playing it during sound check. And I was just playing around, wasn't doing anything. And he said, What are you doing with that? I said, Nothing. He said, I said, I said, you guys want to play it with me? He said, Ain't nobody playing it with you. You're gonna sit and you're gonna sing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you, 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 don't, you don't know how it's gonna touch folks. I just knew I loved the song, you know, and uh, wh whatever Elton John song I'm doing, the Rocket Man, uh, your song, the bottom line, just hopefully put it down and somebody will uh, will be touched by it. Exactly. exactly. If they're letting it in, that's the whole thing of letting it in. Come on now. I know that uh, one of our mutual friends, Maurice White, before one of the main educations that I remember as a young Victor growing up that he gave to, and I met, I had the privilege of meeting him through my brother Wayne Vaughn. Oh, but yeah. one of the things that, that I remember Maurice always educating me on is like, Vic, you will have times when your artistry will just be pouring, pouring out, meaning that you have a creative moment. But his main thing was never close the door of your vessel opening. Keep it open. Hey, you know, exactly. you know Maurice, and, I, and brother, I take that with me to this day, even through my, my bad times in this industry, because if you, you know, I mean, because there were times when I've had you know, the, I'm just keeping it real. Those are no big to do it. I have record deals fell through or a publishing okay. deal didn't happen. And then life paused as an artist. And because, you know, hey, I guess a lot of people call us artists the sensitive ones, which we are. But that's a positive because we can feel and be able to say what others may not be able to interpret to say. But I know your journey, brother. Yeah. Um, you know, you've gone through your, your ups and downs for oh, yeah. a while. Oh, you yeah. know, and, and with that, uh, tell me about, you know, tell me, tell me how, what brought you through those times? Well, what brought me through those times? One, remembering that I am the vessel. Okay. <laughs> and leaving myself open, it's going to come. Somebody asked me, well, do you ever run dry? And I said, thank God, no, because the vessel is all encompassing of what's around. It's whether I desire, desire to let it in. And if I'm gonna let it in, I'm not just gonna do it halfway. And I'm hearing, that's how I can hear covers and change them. Because, you know, you've heard that color before. Well, what else new can I do with that? Yeah. You know, and, and when I do an original, you know, make it feel so good, you shot two hallelujahs. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not one, but two. That's right. But yeah, two. Don't, don't hold that one. I, wait, what? That's right. <laughs> Matter of fact. And that's the whole thing about, I know that as I'm doing what I do, yeah. and once I learned I was supposed to do it, meaning be the soundtrack. Folks have said soundtrack of your life or whatever, but I know that I am the soundtrack of all these different people's lives. I don't take it for granted. And if they sing with me or they clap with me, let it happen. It's going to be, and then there'll be times, like when I play Planet Hope, you'll sit there and say, oh yeah, this is something we need to have happen. You know, but that's the thing. <clears throat> if I'm gonna get funky with you, I'm gonna get down right so you just feel it in your esophagus. <laughs> No, nope. that's right. That's right. <laughs> and brother, I have to tell you, you know, with that explanation right there to make you feel it and you go feel it the esophagus that, you know, that funk, you hear these terms, the funk of it, the soul. And I know you and Bootsy Collins are working together right Woo! now. You I'm are one of the masters of, of funk himself. And I cannot wait to hear what you guys are coming up with that. Oh, I, oh it, it, it's going to scare you with love. Ah! <laughs> hey, like they say, scare me. I'm ready. Scare me. Hey. <laughs> but Lucy <laughs> Collins and Ellis Hall, my goodness. But you know, it, it, it brings back to that whole thing yeah. of, you know, it crossing the bounds and connecting with the people of all walks of life. I mean, with, with, brother, you've, you've had your experience of life of performing, or I'm not even going to use the word performing. I'm going to say connecting because these people like Nelson Mandela, oh, Jackie yeah. Onassis. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, you know, it's so funny because Miss Onassis, God bless her, all over the world and seen so many things. And uh, it was my group, the Ellis Hall group. We got to play at the uh, compound in Hyannis. And her quote was, 
you know, you guys are so tight. She couldn't believe the energy that was coming from the stage. And when I met Mr. Mandela, oh God, I was in a room way, way in the back. I don't know how he found out, but when he did find out, he, just like Moses parting the Red Sea, he parted everybody wow. and his bodyguards. He even parted them. He came up to me and gave me a big hug. And one of the songs I performed for him was a tune called Why Should I Care? And I, you know, it's like, you, you don't get to do that too often. Come on. Someone, like touching Miss Oprah when I was at her house, you know, touching her with song. And at one time it was Gail, her, and myself sitting <laughs> around the piano singing. Okay. You know, and we were doing. <laughs> La 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 I love you. You know, and we're just sitting there <laughs> at her great big grand and trying to bring it all to life. Amen. Not trying yeah. to bring it all to oh, life. Oh, oh man. Come, Come on, bro. Bro. Come on now. And you know what's so deep is that Brother William Boogie Hart is going to be joining us, who you just did La La La, the Delphonics. Hoogie's going to be joining us on that. And you and uh, share a lot, or, or the, how can I put it, the, the, the connection of inner soulfulness, where either if it's on stage, whether it's in the studio, whether I've seen some and heard some incredible street musicians that don't have a, their stage is the sidewalk. <laughs> but they are giving that soul. They're making you feel it. They're making you smile. They're bringing those tears to your eyes. But they, you know, they, they're giving that. So that depth of soul, that depth of, of connection that you're talking about. Yes. Do you feel in some way that, and I'm not going political negative. I'm just going <laughs> artist talk yes. of the industry itself, Brother Ellis. And the artistry of the artist. Is there a disconnect more now than it was before of that real feeling of, and if it is, is it the industry or the, because I know it comes to a business when it comes to the industry. And I'm not well, knocking. It's always it been that business infrastructure that the thought is, well, we see this guy has the it factor how much can we dig our hands into that pocket? That's kind of always been, and it goes in ebbs and flows. I find today there's a lot of talent, but a lot of the talent tends to go toward, how can I put this? What's the easiest way to make a song instead of what's the hardest way to get into and touch your soul with whether it's a lot of chords or a melody that one you won't forget, but two, it's like makes you feel something. Gotcha. I, I, told, I told my Leala, who's the wife and manager, the other day, I says, man, don't we sometimes sound like our grandparents? Well, that music is just... What's interesting, I realize there are different colors of today and they can touch you. But what happens is when you go to the commonest, the lowest common denominator, you're gonna get just those four chords and they're gonna be played over and over until something breaks through and you say, oh my, that's what I was waiting for within this time. So mm -hmm. I pray to be that person who someone might look as an oasis. Yes, a yes. A song, or whether it's a ballad that says, you know, like I wrote a song that Tower of Power did uh, uh, a while ago called Some Days from It for Rain. And, you know, I wrote it from a true thing of uh, an old manager and his uh, wife um, had split up and I played him the song, he cried, he played it for her and she cried on a cassette. Wow, and wow. The rest is history, and they they stayed together for thirty five years. So I'd say, look at, that, the, that, look at the, 
Now, see, th there you go, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot of people, and I can't really see a lot of them, but I know through our, our co-producer, Wendy Vaughn, she's saying that the, the comments are coming on the page, and I'm getting text of, of just a, a positivity and thankfulness of what you're bringing to the show right now, the education in it, you know? And, and it's like, you know, you talk about in the, the age of independent artistry right now. Yes, yes. And, avenue of of the internet i remember back in the day we would you know like you mentioned cassette we would i would i remember the days of walking my cassette in and 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 hopefully they get the right producer to hear it or what have you and, and, and yeah. way back. but what is your what is your take on this whole thing are the new day artists or even seasoned artists nowadays what do you feel about the accessibility of that original style, right? Or, or pro projection right now? That's a good question. Because the accessibility, well, now that God has, has hit the reset button, come on. We're, we're all in this thing of where we can put music out there. But there's still, through all that music that's been put out there, think of a record company, they would get like 5,000 tapes. And if you're lucky, 10 might get through. There you go. Those odds are still there. But if you put your right foot forward, there's no way you can fail. Even if someone says, well, I don't hear it. Well, you don't hear it, but somebody else will. And I know they will, because I know the song has something to say. Or mm -hmm. I know I can write many, many songs. That's how I've written thousands of songs. And I said earlier, I feel like I'm just getting started. Because Come on. that vessel... It's like a well. Yeah. So I do my best to keep on filling up that well as it fills up me. Yes, brother. Totally. Yeah. You know, I mean, man, that, that right there was just another addition to those artists right now who may be feeling like, you know what? I mean, I'll just stay creating in my room. Nothing will ever happen. Oh, the world won't hear my music or whatever. And, you know, that what you gave is a, is a hope and a direction to hang on, continue your artistry, develop, put it out there. And, and that's always been my, my I'm gonna say my, my sermon, my speech to, to these artists who are yeah, giving up. Well, the well, you, look, you look at somebody like Billie Eilish. Yeah. I heard her and her brother. Yes, okay, that's right. They were in their, uh, in her bedroom, just creating this music. Yeah. You know what yeah. it's gonna do? And look what, it just exploded. And yeah. she'll continue, you know, uh, uh, Lizzo does what she does because she feels it. Uh -huh. Not because, well, it's going to sell a million and this and that. If it happens to sell a million, that's all well and good. If it goes viral, right. do what you do to the best of your ability. There you go. Uh, I'm going to be singing and playing. <laughs> I'm no longer here. And even then, as I wrote the song, the spirit lingered on. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And you know what? Before I can't let you go, brother, without uh, uh, find out. So, so many people are yeah. asking about the Ellis Hall Tower of Power uh, uh, journey because oh! you know, the Tower of Power, oh my goodness, man. It's like when the, when the Ellisism hit that Tower of Power groove. Come on now. Let me tell you, <laughs> the first time the Ellis Hall group in, I believe it was 75, opened up for Tower of Power. I was a fan already, because I saw them at a little club in Boston called Cookie Kikades, and okay. they hit on to me. It was in 1973. So when my manager at the time asked, hey, you want to open up for it? I said, are you freaking kidding me? You know? <laughs> so the first time we opened up, there was one guy from the group, and I believe it was Chester Thompson, CT, standing by the stage watching me because I had a setup of Clavinet, Hammond A100, that stuff was heavy, harp <laughs> synthesizer, and I had it all screaming. Yeah. The next show, because we did almost like seven shows with them, I believe, everybody was standing around the stage watching us get crazy. And then after that, I got asked to join like at least six times, either on mm. drums, on bass, on chicken picking guitar. Yeah. And finally, I joined in 84 as a utilities man, of course, singing 
and playing keyboard, but I ended up playing guitar on the power record, wrote six of the tunes. They wow. let me in. And in fact, I talked to Emilio this morning just to send him love and make sure he's doing okay. And I talked to Doc, the famous funky doctor, Kuka. There you go. You know, I stay in touch. I don't close anybody out of my circle. If they feel they go sideways, uh, they'll go their way and I send them off with love. God bless them. But right I ain't got, time, ain't got time for the negative. They, come on now. And it ain't, hey. it ain't a judgment. Hey, come on now. Hey, bro, I don't got to repeat that one because I've mentioned three of your quotes, but I got to add that one to it. Quote, unquote, I ain't got time for the negative. No, <laughs> no, no. I choose, I choose not to take no time. You know? Because so. you know what? When we do on Instagram Live, I do a series uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays called the Positivity Posse on Instagram. Hey, Live. come on now. <laughs> Because, uh, and, and, and when this is over, I'm going to sit up right there in the room and point at you and say, look at this dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and brother, you know, and much congratulations on your upcoming uh, project revival. And some of the people that are there, is, it's, it's actually, it's a Holly Carter and Harry Lennox project, right? Yeah, and most folks know Miss Carter just did, uh, Dr. Carter, just did the um, Clark Sisters. That's right. Ooh, but. Yeah. Harry Lennox is on one of my favorite shows, The Blacklist. That's right. That's right. And he's on the five heartbeats and stuff, you know. Yeah. Oh, come on now. We got history up in here. Yes, that's right. And you know what? Along with your some of your contemporaries there, we got what? Kenny Lattimore, yep. uh, Dawn, the, the incredible Don Lewis. Yep. Uh, who else is on that uh, project? Uh, Molly Music is Jesus and that young brother. And wow. Things we have in common. He's from Savannah, Georgia, and I was born in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. <laughs> hey, well, I grew up partway in Claxton. One side of the signs is entering, the other is leaving. Say that again for me. What I say? Said, one side of the sign of Claxton says entering, the other side says leaving. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I got you. It, it just no, makes no, sure you know where you're going, right? No, no. When I, when I told the mayor that, I said, I'm honored to be back here. And they had one, one stoplight at that time. He said, well, we've grown a little. We got three. <laughs> right on, man. Brother Ellis Hall yeah. and your wonderful, wonderful, you call her wife manager. Wife manager, yeah. Wife oh, manager. my goodness. She is such, she's such an incredible soul. And you, my brother, the combination of you two, power houses yes. of positivity. Thank you so much for, I, 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 we, I just, you know, one, I would love to be able, when we get back into our home at the studio, welcome you back to that, to that as well. But I just thank you for taking the time today, brother. Thank God you. Pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a, uh, I'm going to say, to say it's a treat would be a total understatement. It's been, a, it's been a journey through positivity. It's been a journey through artistry. It's been a journey through spirituality. And it's been a journey through real. Only the, the way that Brother Ellis Hall can do. Much respect, much love. And don't forget, everybody, uh, come on back every Saturday and Sunday, 1 o'clock, three o'clock. We're here at the Victor Brooks show page for our Facebook live quarantine series. And we're putting it together. We have some incredible people that are going to come share their journey of positivity. On the docket, we have uh, Clifton Davis himself who's going to come on and do some things for us. And uh, the comedian David Arnold uh, is coming on his Netflix special. Please go check it out. Fat Ballerina, an incredible uh, individual. Uh, tomorrow, even before next week, we have the comedian, Brother Jonathan Slocum, who's going to be here with us tomorrow. And I believe that's a, that's a, a, a friend of yours as well, Ellis. And uh, also the house diva performer herself and my baby sister, literally the same mom and daddy, Miss Julie McKnight, will be here with us tomorrow for her part two. So much love, much positivity, and we're going to see you next time, y'all. Right on from the Victor Brooks Show.